Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin, and I'm joined by a pair of special co-hosts today. Raised in the UK, Atusa Benji moved to the United States in high school and then graduated UCLA with a degree in sociology. She became a certified birth doula and childbirth and lactation educator in 2003 and has helped hundreds of families through their childbirth and postpartum journeys. And she recently became a birth doula trainer. Atusa and her husband are parents of three wonderful girls and live in Los Angeles. Atusa has a passion for education and informed choice. One of her favorite quotes is, if you don't know your options, you don't have any options. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Did I make that up or is that one of your favorite quotes? It is one of my favorite quotes. That's what I thought. (laughs) It's one of my favorite quotes of your favorite quotes. Nicole Sessions is a wife, mother, birth worker and artist. In addition to being a writer and actress, she is certified as a birth doula, Reiki practitioner, yoga instructor, and hypnobirthing childbirth educator. Do you do taxes? (laughs) She is currently finishing her first year as an herbalism apprentice. Nicole and her husband recently started a business selling vaginal steam stools and herbal steaming blends. Yeah. Which, who couldn't use one of those? (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Excited to be here. You guys have this incredible wealth of experience. Like, together, it's a giant basket of experience. Mm. And you you both do a lot of births. (laughs) Yes. A basket. Yeah. Lots of tools in the basket. Like an enormous birth ball of experience. (laughs) That's what I'm picturing. (laughs) Our guest today is Marisa Callahan. She's a mom to four kids, ages four and under. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, That explains the sparkling wine. And uh, (laughs) and she has some very interesting birth experiences. Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. Thank you. I met you during your first pregnancy when things were still going kind of normal for you. (laughs) And um, you were just getting ready for a plain old birth. Right? It was, yeah. I think I was trying to remember today. I think it was around 18 weeks when I first saw you. So almost halfway through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, towards the end, you were just like, I mean, what what kind of birth were you looking for? Did you have? Did you do research? Did you have an idea on what you wanted? Yeah, I I I'm the type of person that when I set my mind to something. I tend to follow through with that. And I, I really did want to have a non-medicated vaginal birth. It was okay. something that I was like, I'm going to do this. And you hear all those horror stories about how painful it is and how crazy a non-medicated birth is. But I just really wanted to do that. So Why? Where did that come from? Was it, What was the benefit know, to it for you? Since um, so few people sort I know. of have that goal. You know, my mom birthed all three of us, my, me and my two brothers, naturally, with no me- medication. And I was like, wow, she's a badass. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could do it. <laughs> and Where I was that? Where were you born? In San Luis Obispo. Oh. I grew up in a Tascadero. Wow. Tiny little town. People cow. live there. <laughs> it's where the in and out is on the 101. Ah, the now in I know out. what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my high school hangout. <laughs> Uh, so that was your goal, natural childbirth. Yes, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I figured people have done it for centuries, and I could do it too. Um, I hired a doula to kind of help support me because I've, I've learned that that was like the first step was to like hire someone to get me through this crazy pain that I kept hearing about. Mm. Um, Where did you, like when you said that's what I kept hearing, were you just talking to friends? Were you researching, yeah. reading books Yeah, I was and reading stuff? a lot of books. I read, I was not working at the time. I was just like chilling and hanging out and decorating the nursery. And wow. it, was, it was an amazing time in my life, just being <laughs> pregnant and not working. Um, the, the calm before all the storms. <laughs> yeah, I had, I mean, before I had worked so many hours, I was working like 60 plus hours a week. So it was really nice to just kind of, be home and research and <laughs> yeah, so I read a lot. Um, How'd you pick your doula? I think I googled her. <laughs> you just googled doula, and yeah. she was like the first one that popped out. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I don't. I That's mean, good SEO. Yeah, think seriously, I just, it's, uh, yeah, I think I just. She actually <laughs> is very good at that kind of stuff. I know who your doula yeah. was then, and she's very good with the online. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine doing it any other way. I think I Googled it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I met with it her. It probably my... wasn't Bing. <laughs> no, it must Ask have been Google. Jeeves, maybe? Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Jeeves, who should be my doula? <laughs> 
And I, yeah, I, my husband and I met her, and we were like, she seems cool. Let's let's go <laughs> let's for hire it. Her. Was was your husband also on board for a natural childbirth? He was like, whatever, honey. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah, he's like, you that's mellow. If you want to do it, go for it. But I think in his mind, he was like, but you should be okay if it's gonna go the route of epidural. And I was like, I'm okay with that, but I really want to try. Yeah, so were you really the, okay with that? Because you just because the way you open, you're like, I, if I say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I would, those kind of people usually aren't okay with a change <laughs> in the plan. I think that I, in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna do this. But when talking to people, I was like, I'm open to whatever. Like, whatever happens, happens. Was that what you're telling people, or is that what you really felt? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you might have been open to it. I might have been open to it. Yeah, we're sort of blessed. We have two very experienced doulas here, and um, I don't. You guys must see all the time that that Marisa's exact birth plan. Mm-hmm. But then, how do you like execute that? Because ninety percent of, I mean, ninety eight percent of women give birth in a hospital in the United States, and I think ninety percent or so get the epidural, and seventy percent or so have pitocin. So how do you beat those odds? Do you want to take this one, Atusa, or <laughs> shall I? <laughs> you know, I always say it's a combination of being educated, being prepared, knowing your options, doing everything you can to stay healthy and low risk. Because if you don't go in healthy and low risk, you don't have that many options at the labor. And I think so many women are not taught nutrition, proper nutrition, exercise, and stress reduction, and all the things that make the body more equipped to go to go into this birth and, and for the woman to have stamina and endurance and to be able to push out her baby without an epidural in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, and then a tiny little bit of luck. Mm. I think luck, just yeah. that genetic component that makes childbirth easier, that little just that little sprinkle of luck, I think, is good in any scenario. So that's the ideal formula, I think, for hmm. me. And it sounds, that was beautiful. sounds like a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a good combination I, I think of, you nailed it. of things. I would add maybe to that, um, those all sound amazing, but just from experience also, the practitioner, like making sure the people around you, Absolutely. Um, yep. whoever's in the room with you, whether it's your partner, your family, your mm-hmm. doula, your your doctor, your midwife, your your nurses, that they all feel really good to you. So you sort of, you had your baby at an institutional kind of uh, place, Kaiser Permanente, so you don't really get to choose exactly who's going to be there. But it, yeah. uh, as it turns out, might not have mattered anyway. Um, and then you, you teach uh, hypnobirthing. Mm-hmm. Is that for hypno people or is that for like anybody? Yeah, I think... Uh People who have the most success with hypnobirthing are people who want to buy into that concept. People who are really willing to, what's the best way to put it? They're suggestible and they are open to the idea that they can really use the tools of their mind to, you know, create a positive expectancy and to experience sensations that are maybe labeled as pain by some people as pressure. Mm -hmm. So it's really someone who's like, I'm going to surrender to reframing what is really the present conversation around labor, which is like, I'm going to be screaming and I'm going to be in pain. And they're they're willing to sign on to this idea that they might be quiet. Mm Mm-hmm. Or, or might be screaming and orgasmic, yeah. or or you know not experience that sort of stereotypical um, movie birth. Yeah, the movie birth. So yeah, I think it can work, but you really have to believe. And that sounds very like Disneyland. Yeah, but they have to believe in the magic. I feel like some of our clients who do have no birthing not are not necessarily reframing it so that they're not feeling pain, but that so they're not feeling fear. Yeah. And so there That's is there the is a lot of parts. energy running through them. There's a lot of intensity and some pain, but they're not afraid of it, so they just surrender to it. Totally. That's did a you, huge uh, piece. Marisa? Did you do a childbirth education class? So I took hypnobirthing. Ah, uh-huh. so <laughs> you can tell us. <laughs> so my doula suggested it, yeah. and I, if you know me, like that seems crazy that yeah. I would go and do this hypnobirthing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and my husband was like, "Seriously, what the? F-? <laughs> <laughs> did <laughs> like, he do it with you? Oh yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> what is this? That's <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, but I totally agree with you that. Um, I kind of, I think, and also agree with you, Dr. Berlin, that I kind of took the fear away mm-hmm. from this crazy pain that people kept talking about and that you hear and read about. 
Um, and I do think that the tools that I learned in that class 100% helped my birth go faster and easier and maybe not less painful, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I think I think faster for sure. So how did labor start for you? Labor started at 6 in the morning when I went to go to the restroom and came back and laid in bed, and my water broke. It was Like, like a big gush? Oh. oh. Yeah. And I was like... No que- there was no question in your mind. Like, oh, I yeah. I was like, or? oh, gosh. <laughs> That's it. My water just broke. <laughs> How far along were you? I was 38 weeks exactly. Oh, wow. Early bird gets the worm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I woke my husband up and I was like, my water just broke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, what do we do? And I was like, <laughs> what happened to the class? <laughs> yeah. What have we learned? So I'm going to go back to bed because I was not feeling any contractions at all. None whatsoever. Had you been having Braxton Hicks? I had been having Braxton it? Hicks since like week 20. Oh, I, okay. So I nothing get them new. super mm-hmm. early in my pregnancies and they come and go and they're not painful. And I think it's just my uterus practicing for the big day. Um, so I was getting those, but nothing painful, nothing regular. Um, I mean, it was six in the morning. I was like, I'm tired. I'm gonna go back to bed. So, so practical. Went, went back to bed. Because <laughs> some people just get too excited. Yeah, like, no. Oh my god, I, my water broke. This is happening. Most people get too excited. Yeah. I, just like, I, I'm going back another, to bed. <laughs> I slept another couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> and that was well, the last really time nice. that ever happened. <laughs> 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 Oh, for Faint real. memory. <laughs> so after a couple of hours, did you wake up with contractions or you just woke no. up? No. Yeah, I woke up. Did when... you call your doula, call your doctor? I texted my doula right when the water broke. 6 a.m. Yeah, 6 a.m. And she was like, okay, um, have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> let that's me also know. her. Very practical. <laughs> yeah, let me know when things get regular. And I, she was 45 minutes away from me, so... Um, she was like, just let me know. I, it's going to be a 45 minute drive, possibly an hour if it's during traffic time. Um, and yeah, like keep me updated. So I was like, okay. (laughs) Um, woke up, no contractions, went along, um, about my day. Um, Were you still like squirting water here and there? Yeah. Yeah. I had to wear a pad and Mm. that was (laughs) <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, what, what is, is there a more technical term? Gently trickling. <laughs> We're gently trickling. The bag I'm sorry. Of, of water. I, like I like the hypnobirthing <laughs> translations of everything. I, I, you know, I heard somebody once say, oh, yeah, my contractions. Well, call me when your contractions are too painful your to. Surge, and your surge. And you wave. can't stand up. And then I was like, yeah, when your, intent, when your surges are, are so productive that you no longer <laughs> choose to stand up. <laughs> there you go. Um. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so around noonish, um, I started getting a little antsy, which Finally. is expected. <laughs> yeah. Because um, still nothing you. was happening. Um, so I decided to take a walk with my dog and my husband. Um, and I think that after the fact, we calculated and we walked like three miles. <laughs> oh wow! Great. <laughs> around our neighborhood. And during the walk, I started feeling a little bit more. I started like, okay, like maybe that was like a real contraction. Like that wasn't painful, but okay, like that seems like it could be something. Um, And it was a hot day. It was so hot. I was just like sweating, walking my dog. Um, What what month? It was in March. Oh, okay. But it's like a Los Angeles March. Yeah. And I was, I mean, super pregnant, so everything is, and I'm just a sweaty pregnant person, so. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, so we went back to my house. I made a sandwich, and I ate a sandwich. I love that you slept, (laughs) and you ate, and you got a little exercise. (laughs) Yeah, and then I took a nap. (laughs) Another nap. Yeah, around 2 p.m., I took another nap because things were just not happening, um, and woke up from the nap after like a 45 minute hour nap and was like, okay, this is real. Like these are some contractions. Um, and about an hour later, it was like me not being able to talk and knowing that, okay, these are definitely the real thing. Started timing them and they were still a little bit irregular, but like some were two minutes apart, some were five, some were seven, again, down to two. Um, and they were getting like 30 seconds to 60 seconds long. Like they were definitely happening. Um, and texted the doula. She was like, I'm on my way. And she arrived, I think it was around 4.30. 
my timing's maybe a little bit off. Something like that. For a couple hours later. A couple hours later. And at that point, I was kind of like in my zone. Um, I had listened to the affirmations once (laughs) about an hour before and didn't touch it again because I was like out of mind, (laughs) out of body experience. I got into the shower and that helped. Um, And she got there. Because we were feeling pain? Yes. Okay. In the front? Serious pain (laughs) in the front. Yes. Okay. Um, being on all fours was like the only thing that would relieve anything. Um, you talked about being out of body though. So does that mean you're somewhat watching yourself go through this? It felt like it at the time. I don't know. It but was you like, also feel it. Oh yeah. I was totally feeling it. It was horrible. <laughs> Laborland. <laughs> Laborland. It was yeah. Laborland. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It was painful. Um, so my doula got there and she started pushing on my hips, was which was definitely like really relieving. That felt mm-hmm. really good. The hip squeeze. The hip squeeze. Yeah. It was like, okay, this feels better. Um, and I then went and sat on the toilet because I was like, I think I have to go <laughs> poop. <laughs> yeah. um, and she was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. And she was like, have you gone today? And I was like, no. And like, I think she was thinking like maybe I did actually have to go. So right. I sat on the toilet. And she then like, because she's not a midwife, so she couldn't check me, but she like looked and I kind of think she was getting nervous because <laughs> the contractions. She looked to see if anything was coming out? Coming out, okay. yeah, I think, yeah. Um, and in her, like, I remember her saying, like, we're good, we're okay, but we should definitely get to the hospital very soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it took me about a half an hour to get from my um, master bedroom to the garage, which is, like, a full flight of stairs. I didn't want anyone to carry me because I was in, like, crazy pain. Um, oh, so, so just being touched or? It, yeah, I just, like, needed I needed to, find to do it positions. myself. Yeah. And it took me a long time because I, just every contraction, I was just, like, bellowing over, like, ah, this is not feeling good. Um, got into the car. My husband, I just I remember him, like, running around with, like, his head cut off, like, trying to get the bags, <laughs> calling his parents, calling my parents, like, it was just like pure chaos. And I remember like being on all fours in the back of our car and yelling at him like, we just need to get to the hospital. Get in the car now. <laughs> Wait, what, did you f- do you feel like the baby was coming or did you feel like I need? I need to go and get an epidural. Epidural, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> like, this is not cool. <laughs> yeah. I am in so much pain and let's get to this the hospital. This was more than you thought it was going to be. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, I need some medication. Now. <laughs> now. Stat. <laughs> So he finally gets into the car and we're going and I don't remember any of this part at all, but my husband said that I became extremely lucid, that I all of a sudden was like, baby, what if I get to the hospital and it's too late and I can't get the epidural? Like, what am I going to do? And I had this like really like soft, like sad voice. And like, that was the most I had. Is that melancholy? (laughs) I never really used that in a sentence. And I remember, I do remember him saying, it's okay. Like, it'll be good either way. We'll get to the hospital and it'll be too late and the baby will just be there. And I'll be Mm -hmm. like, you'll have the baby and it'll be good. Or we get there and you'll get the epidural and be fine. Like, I remember him saying that and being like okay everything's gonna be good (laughs) (laughs) practical and then literally seconds later i'm screaming oh my god his head is out wow and and i his head like looked down and i still remember my husband feel his head coming out it i mean it just came out like there was i mean obviously there was a contraction so there was some sort of like body tension and I may have been pushing at the time or I don't know what I was doing <laughs> like but his head just came out and I was wearing um, underwear so it was being cradled by the underwear oh that's how, how helpful <laughs> <laughs> um, and my husband I remember him saying no it's that's just the feeling the pressure remember that everyone talked about the pressure and I was like <laughs> no his head is out and I remember because you can see it yes his head was out <laughs> wow and my I, I still remember to this day his face it was like bed sheet white horrified <laughs> look <laughs> like oh my god we're going to the hospital we're turning around we're going to Huntington because <laughs> we were because well, you were trying to drive from where you live to we were trying to go to Baldwin Kaiser, Park Kaiser right. yeah which was going to be oh, it take Park. about an hour it was about 5 p.m. at the time 5:30 it was going to take an hour at least to get and there and the head was out and the head was out how long till you got to Huntington um I mean I think it was probably five ten minutes oh close yeah we live really close we live like two miles okay. 
Um, and Were you ab- freaking out? Like, what to do oh, next? Yeah, yeah. So the next. Did few they cover minutes, that in the uh, hypnobirthing complete class? No, what, is your doula in version. the car with you? She's following us, and she is on the speakerphone and is hearing all oh, of this. Oh my goodness! Wow. wow. I don't hear her, um, but she's hearing everything that Ezra and I are, are saying. She must have been freaking out too. Oh yeah, I'm lying. sure. I've I've actually never like. I mean, she, I did ask her like, what did it sound like, and she didn't go into detail because I think it was pretty. <laughs> I wish we could go to T-Mobile and get the records. Uh, <laughs> can we get this call. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the next five minutes were really scary for us. Um, I had this moment of, oh my gosh, my baby is not alive because oh. his head was out and he wasn't crying. Because you know how you see in the movies, like, oh, when the baby cries, there everything's, everything's okay. okay. And he was not crying, but he was still attached to the cord. So I just like in my, you don't realize that in the moment. Wow, it's, he was getting his breath through the cord and he hadn't like taken his first breath yet Mm -hmm. um definitely no time for an epidural (laughs) (laughs) no so it was it was like very scary for a little while and then he literally just slid right out so i'm still on all fours and i catch him and we happen to have a towel like in the back so i wrap him in a towel i'm pretty sure that my doula put the towel in the car like thank (laughs) god (laughs) um wrapped him in the in the towel and he started crying and after that, we both my husband and I started laughing. Like it was <laughs> like because we were like oh everything's my, okay. Yeah, he's alive. We did he's it. Good. And I was Relief. just holding him, and it was like we just had a baby in the car. Like That's whoa, incredible. <laughs> what just happened? That's almost like I didn't know I was pregnant. The TV show. <laughs> it's like we just wow. had our baby in the car. Holy yeah. cow! So and then you got to Huntington not too long after that. Yeah, right. And we pulled up to the ER, um, and and did he? Did, I mean. Did they come out to you? Did he? Yeah, so I mean, my, so my husband was driving this entire time. We never, we actually did stop right around the corner because there was a cop on a motorcycle. And my husband was like, we just had a baby in the car. Ah! <laughs> he, like, oh I gosh. think was expecting an escort or something. And I remember seeing the, um, <laughs> the motorcycle cop being like, the hospital's right there. Like, you're literally around <laughs> the corner. Go. Like, just go. And he's like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> so we, like, ran around the corner into the hospital. Um, so he was driving the entire time. He pulled up. He gets out of the car again, like, running around. And, like, there's the valet guy right there. And he's like, we just had that baby in the car. We need a doctor. We need nurses. Like, get someone out here. And they all started coming out. And there were a lot of people from the ER coming out. And once they figured out that I was fine, the baby was fine, then it was kind of like this lull of like, okay, how do we get her from the car onto this gurney? <laughs> With the baby attached. <laughs> right. With the baby still attached, yeah. Um, I ended up like, yeah, just moving over, and they kind of like put me onto the gurney. Did you not want to cut the cord at that point? I don't think that they, they are allowed to do it outside of the hospital. Oh, really? Uh, that's my guess. Um, I don't know. They didn't offer it. They didn't offer it. No, it was like, how do we get this this woman? And These her baby two people connected by this gurney? cord. Yeah, generally ER is like um, L and D. We don't touch we pregnant don't t- people. Yeah. <laughs> well, you weren't or, pregnant. Or babies or postpartum people. Yeah. yeah, it was like a lot of like standing around, being like, what do mm, we do? Scratching the chin. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, Phone yeah, a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then get into the ER, and they stab me with an IV immediately. What? Yeah. Well, for what? I think that's protocol. <laughs> just just uh, show up at the hospital and get an yeah, IV? Yeah, I had a huge bruise. But you were that. fine. I you was were so, fine and the baby was fine. I was so fine, yeah. That was like probably the worst pain. <laughs> was, this, like, was the IV? IV. I oh, no, think I that's mean, something they do. Obviously the birth well, was the worst pain. Well, they just start an IV for the heck of it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's like in your, what are they even in your, put in your through training the IV? manual. It's like when you don't know what to do, just start, just an, start an IV. IV. It seems worried like about a hemorrhage or something. Because they had no history on her. So okay, they probably well, wanted the IV in, in yeah, case of a hemorrhage. Sure so they would have access. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gave me an IV. And then I think just did some few tests. I don't know. I don't remember any of that. Like, I don't, maybe my blood pressure. I have no idea. Yeah. 20, 30 minutes later, sent me up to LND because I still had the placenta. Oh, to deliver. To deliver the placenta. Deliver, yeah. Yeah. Um, delivered the placenta. Um, yeah. How was that? That was not good. Yeah. No? <laughs> I, yeah, that was a little painful. That was worse than delivering the kid? Oh, yeah. Really? Definitely. Wow. They were, like, pulling it out. Like, oh, so you didn't deliver it. They Yeah, they, like, it. pull it. Yeah. Mm. That didn't feel good. Yeah, I mean, that him coming out of me did not it. hurt at all. It was, he just slid right out. Like, no pushing. The contractions were absolutely painful. Definitely. Um, and even after? With the, after no, the, no, no, just, no. Just the pre-contractions? Just the, yeah. The, like, hour and a half. 
of crazy contractions. How much do you weigh? Six pounds, four ounces. Who's little? I have little babies. You have little babies? Yeah. Is that something you guys cover in in your classes and when you do consults with your clients? Like, eh, by the way, if you give birth in the car, this is how you handle it? <laughs> Absolutely. What are the tips? Um, it, I teach childbirth classes, and my childbirth curriculum has a page on emergency childbirth that I assign for homework to both parents, um, but especially the partner. <laughs> um, and it could be the kitchen floor, the tub, the shower, the, the car. Car is almost the best scenario because you're on your way to, mm. <laughs> to get to the hospital. To the yeah. hospital. Anyway. And there's also really nice climate control in there. <laughs> right, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> um, so what I think the most important things is those babies that come out so quickly usually are healthy, vibrant babies. So the things to do that are really important and the things not to do. Because that people are only going to remember two or three things. They're not going to remember entire protocol for catching a baby. So keep the baby warm. Keep the baby attached. Don't cut the cord. Put a blanket around mom and baby. Don't th- cut the cord unless you need to. Like sometimes it's no. It's, don't cut the cord. I mean, it's just call nine one one. Just mm-hmm. call 911. Yeah, First I thing mean, is just call 911 and have them, pull over. Yeah, have yeah. them guide we you. We did everything wrong. You. Right. Because that's the thing, <laughs> they right? No time. They can come to you. <laughs> yeah, well, we should Very have quickly. pulled over. Like, I mean, in hindsight, we should have pulled over. We should have called 911. My husband should not have been blaring the horn, driving down the medium, <laughs> like going, whatever, 50 miles an hour, right. trying no, to get to the hospital. Because you were like just giving person. birth. I mean, at the end of the day, there was nothing wrong with you or the baby. There was nothing, yeah. And and right, why get everybody in danger? Yeah. You just pull over to a safe place, put on your hazards, call 911. Plus, your doula was right behind you. She's going <laughs> to come in there and help you. <laughs> so, <sighs> all together, once the surges started, two hours or? It was about two, yeah. Wow. That's really good. After the, Do you think it's almost entirely because of your chiropractor? <laughs> that went so well. Sorry, oh, I'm hey. not supposed to bounce or do this. <laughs> That's right. Uh, um, okay. Maybe no, not. I do. I do. I have to say. I mean, I think that that year you had four car births. Yeah, right? we did. It's funny because we that have has a. To say something. We have a. You know, the official title of this podcast with Marisa is "Breaches Twins in Automobiles." <laughs> I like that. We covered some of it so far, the automobile part. But we do have one called Roadside Delivery. It's like one of the first podcasts we ever did. And um, I was thinking, "Mm, who can I get on for Roadside Delivery? And I think we even thought about getting you on there for Roadside Delivery. But I realized we had so many that we could choose from. And I thought, it must be me. It is you. uh, (laughs) Yeah. So if anybody wants to have the baby in the car, visit our website. Sounds good to me. (laughs) Um, I want to talk quickly about your second pregnancy because that one was sort of more run of the mill. Yeah, that yeah, that was it was uh, again really fast. Um, well, now that you knew, I was so scared <laughs> to have a baby in the car. Too again. fast. Yeah. Um, well, you knew the intensity this time mm-hmm. was more intense than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Did you like set your mind again? Hey, I'm going to do this without drugs or no? No. You said I'm definitely getting drugs. No. No. I said whatever. Why don't you tell us what you thought? <laughs> I said whatever. This time I really meant whatever happens, happens. Okay. Um, I think in my mind I was like, okay, doing it, um, no medication would be great again. I know I can do it, and it's good for my body. It's good for the baby, um, and I, I know I can do it. But I also was not going to be this hero and try <laughs> and do it again when I was in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Um so it was kind of... Did labor start spontaneously? No, no. Um, I thought I was in labor. I was being really conservative. Um, because of last time. Because of the time, yeah. So I... No nap, no long walk, <laughs> no in and out burger. Yeah, so I went to the hospital thinking maybe I was in labor. Um, something just felt a little off all day. Um, I was getting the same Braxton Hicks. They weren't getting... Um, any more regular and not any more painful, but I just felt like, all right, there, there are, they're coming, but something just feels off. So I went, and I was, I was only one centimeter. Oh, <laughs> that's there. And how far along was that? Thirty-eight weeks exactly. Oh, again. Again. On the mark. <laughs> On the mark. So but did they send you home? Nope. She. So they hooked me up um, to just monitor for twenty minutes because that's what they do at Kaiser, and her heart rate with every Braxton Hick was going down. Oh, a little deceleration. They didn't like that. Yeah. Um, so they gave me a few options, and that um, 
that OB on call definitely gave me the, this could end up in a, a C-section, which I never even thought would ever happen because my first labor was so easy. Right. And I was just like, no, no, no. What are you talking about? You rarely <laughs> go from automobile birth to C-section. Yeah, like, no, no, no. no. Like, let's, what are some other options? Like, let's, let's figure this out. And she was like, your baby's coming out today. And we have a few options. So we can fill your sack full of saline water to see if that kind of um, – Oh, gives more space. More space. So, yeah, yeah, so like maybe the cord was being pushed against Impressed. the uterine wall and like that will hopefully – ease that up and then uh, during the contractions if she's not dipping again then we can kind of let you progress naturally but we are going to deliver her today so we did that and it worked it was everything was great um, you, you put in a saline infusion yes yeah, so they put a tube up up me and filled me with saline water and it kind of just was going in and out so it constantly felt like i was just peeing all mm -hmm. day <laughs> i love that feeling yeah warm water everywhere coming out uh <laughs> and then for a day no, no, no. That was just um, I. They did that um, for like um, an hour, and they were like, "It most likely will break the sac, the amniotic sac," um, and which it did. Um, or did it? They, I think it broke the sac when they put it in. When they put it in, right. yeah. I don't know actually what happened. <laughs> At some point, the sac broke. <laughs> the sac, the sac broke, broke when they put point. it in. Yeah, probably. I think they said that in a, it could break because I don't think that they broke it. Or did they have to break it when they put the thing in? I yeah, think so they I think have it, to yeah. Break it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, "You'll just progress naturally from here." And they were like, "If you're, if you're not progressing fast enough, we'll give you pitocin." Mm -hmm. um, and that was so that's right. So it did break my water, and then an hour and a half later is when she came flying out. Oh no, pitocin. No Pitocin. I remember because I was sort of on call. We yes, were like texting. Yes, you were on call and... Because you did not have a doula this time. I did not have a doula. I decided not to have a doula this time. And yeah, so I once I felt the contraction started, starting again, I was like, okay, this is going to happen exactly how it was. It's going to take an hour to, to two hours and it's going to be super painful. I did ask for an epidural because I was like in a lot of pain after the first like 45 minutes. And they were like, well, you're fifth in line. Oh. So wow. I was like, okay. They were like, it could take an hour. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. Boy. So I labored for that next, it was like 50 minutes. And um, I basically, as I was, as she came out, he was like rolling his car in. Oops. And then Ezra <laughs> said that he saw him like roll the car out. <laughs> <laughs> as he was like seeing my baby come out. Oh, that's funny. Wow. So yeah, no time for the epidural. It was good. Were you, were you happy you didn't have yes, it in I the was, end? Yes, I was. In the end, I was so happy that I didn't. Um, I I think that my labors are super short, but really painful. Yeah, I think the short labors <laughs> tend to, to be transition. really like yeah. a train just, moving It's like you. literally yeah. a train, yes. Right, because normally they warm yeah. up. They're yeah. not so intense. They're I not, don't get any of that. It is just like You're just on. a full-on train. Yeah. Yes. But and then it, you know it's not going to take too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So once I knew that, I was like, okay, that's, yeah. I, can I want to take a, a little break before we get to uh, your third pregnancy. But before we do that, I have a question for each of our co-hosts. First of all, what is a V-STEAM? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I love talking about this. Um, so V-STEAM is vaginal steaming. And um, it's basically a very ancient practice. It's something that's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years on every continent on the planet. And it's um, it's care for your vagina, your ovaries, your uterus. And you take herbs and put them in steaming water and you sit over the steam. Uh, the idea is that the energetic properties of the herbs help to heal gynecological problems. And it just feels really great. So it's like a facial for your vagina, I always say. Oh. It feels so good. I only recently learned there's a back facial. Right, and, yeah. And I was wondering what else you could facial. Now I know. Yeah, that's like three things right there. That's a lot of things to facial. <laughs> yeah. Vajacial. Vajacial. <laughs> but it's that's great awesome. for postpartum women. So that's sort of the historical Sounds context awesome. of it. That's is that women so how does this, does the stool heat up the water? So you can heat the herbs on the stove, okay. or you can have a burner and let the water come to a boil over the burner. And then you add the herbs. You they, they get the herbs from you. They do get the herbs from and me. the stool from yeah. you. Yeah, you can get them online. Okay, Etsy. And are there them different them for formulations depending on what's going yeah, on? Yeah, so there's uh, I have like four different blends, and one is kind of a universal blend, and that's 
including postpartum women. Um, and then there's a blend for like an active infection if you tend towards yeast. And then there's a blend for women who are more sensitive. So I use a sensitive blend, meaning like my period sometimes is not you know, every 28 days, it can be shorter. Um, And then I have a blend for people who tend towards like dry, brittle conditions. So you have dry hair or dry skin, or you have hot flashes. And you can steam even after, um, during menopause and after menopause. And it helps with those changes. It helps to regulate the hormones and helps with vaginal dryness. It helps with like 90% of gynecological issues. Is it different than taking like an herbal bath? It is different, yeah. I mean... You are using the same qualities. You're using water and you're using herbs. But in an herbal bath, you would be submerging your whole body. Mm -hmm. And this is really targeted. So the steam goes in between your legs, Mm -hmm. up the vaginal canal. And if you do it for a longer time, it could go all the way up to, like, unblocking fallopian tubes. It can treat ovaries. So a shorter steam would just be sort of for, like, the vulva. And as you steam longer, it could, the steam rises and goes to the higher parts. And you also mm-hmm. earlier mentioned that it could be used for all members of the family. This is true. Even non the, the non-V people. Yes. So people without a vagina can steam. <laughs> it's called an A steam. Uh-huh. So for hemorrhoids or any sort of like, you know, if you have any itching, anything like that. Um, it's even great for girls who are like just about to get their period, like a nice self-care ritual. So is there one you'd recommend before pregnancy, like before getting pregnant to just sure. clear you out? For sure. Um, there's Roll people the who do carpet. it when they're trying to, <laughs> trying to conceive, right, to sort of regulate their cycle. Yes. Um, and, you know, the contra- in- there's contraindications. Mm-hmm. So if you have an IUD, if you're pregnant, because the steam can't open the cervix. So those are things you have to be Oh, it can't aware. open the cervix? Yeah. So is that something you do like if you're trying to induce yourself? I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> oh, you but can't yeah, use a pregnant. You can't. And well, my teacher, my teacher actually steamed before both of her labors. Wow. So when she felt herself going into labor, she did steam. Oh, so there, there, there's an asterisk there. So I would mm. say pregnant, no, but you know, it's right before, personal. I mean, like, yeah, if you're after preference. 40 weeks, and then it's like oh, yeah. a little steam or some pitocin. Yeah, I think if you felt like things were starting to get going, yeah. Interesting. And where? what is your website? Where do we find it? It is www.yonithrone.me. Y-O- Y-O-N-I-T-H-R-O-N-E dot me. Dot me. Yay, Yoni. <laughs> Self-care. Um, Yay for the Yoni. Thank the you wind. for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, Atusa, you're not just a doula and a childbirth educator and a lactation educator. Now you teach people how to be doulas. Yes. I want to know more about that. What is doula training like? And what is it like for you with all your experience to train new doulas? Oh, it's amazing. Um, what a blessing. I feel really privileged to be able to do that. Um, these are basically usually women who are called to helping other women um, during the pregnancy and labor and childbirth and postpartum period. And they're women who come from all sorts of backgrounds. So they could be single or married or have children or in retirement. Or I had a 16-year-old take my training one time, and I actually had to call the board and be like, is this okay? (laughs) Um, And she was brilliant. She was like 16 going on 65. But she was just an old soul, and she had done so much research and knew so much. And it's it's such just an honor to be able to give them tools and teach them how to read evidence-based research and teach them to honor their own stories and to honor other people's stories and how to work with their care provider and how to be a team and and um, how to work with disparities and how to give service to all women in the community, not just certain groups of women. Um, and they, they come out excited and well-trained and knowing that they are part of a team and part of something amazing and having no agenda other than healthy mom, healthy baby, positive birth experience, Mm -hmm. informed choices. Oh, that's so like what we do. Yeah. We're doula siblings. There we go. We did doula training at the same time. Yes. Um, Right? No, I I was, I had, I sat You had done doula training a long time before that. I had done it a long time before that. I just took like a little, I took a little refresher. Yeah. And you were there, yes. I was there. That was I was one of the only two guys in the training. Yes. There was uh, another man. Who was the other man? Uh, well, there was another guy who was three months old and mostly sucking on a boob the whole time. Oh, but, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so he wasn't much of a conversation. He was early in his doula career. He's going to be a great doula. <laughs> he, he probably will be. He just wasn't much of a conversationalist. <laughs> There's a reason he was there. Uh, 
reason he was a quiet type. So. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to talk about with Marisa about her third pregnancy and the interesting twists that it brought. In the meantime, visit us at informedpregnancy.com, share us with your friends, and find our blog, documentaries, and other informative media at informedpregnancy.com. <laughs> 